Good evening, everyone. I wanted to discuss the a Phantom comic I read recently. And this is The Shadow. And it was written by Klaus Remerti. I believe he was from Sweden and passed away, I think, last year. And he wrote many very good Phantom stories for the European market. And The Shadow is one of them. This part of the lives of the 14th Phantom, who lived in the early 1800s, and it takes place in 1831, which is the year he will die, and his son will take over, as is the legacy of all the Phantoms. It begins with the funeral of the Phantom's wife, and it's been attended by a friend of theirs, Frederick Chopin. The Phantom, Kit Walker, is pretty torn up about this, and he travels to Naples, which was the honeymoon that he spent with his wife, Mary Claire, to try to just deal with the grief. And on the way there, he meets a count and a servant, and he assists them when their carriage is broken. And when they arrive into the town, he stays in the room that he shared with his wife many years earlier on their on their wedding night. And that night he hears some music playing across across the street. The music is very familiar to him because it was music that his wife liked. It's a piano piece. Now most of the story though is about the count and his servant and the servant is trying to frame the count uh, for some robberies and maybe some murders. And the way he does is that he drugs the Count. He wants to take his place. The Count falls in love with a woman named Isabel, and um, he's befriended the, sh the Phantom. In the meantime, the Phantom continues to hear music, and one night he sees a shadow, a woman, across the street, and where the music is coming from. And again, it was music that his wife liked. He can't make out the woman's profile. But that same night, a man is assaulted. And the, the Count believes it's him, because he's been ill for a long time. He has difficulty sleeping. He takes medication to sleep. But he doesn't know that he's being drugged all this time by a servant. And what's happening is the servant is very envious of his position. He's, his, his social class is very low. And he wants to take the Count's place. So he wants to frame him. In the meantime, the Phantom wants to find out who lives across the street, but he can't find any information. There's a Jekyll and Hyde undertones in this story, of course. And maybe a little bit of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari as well. But in essence, so there's another influence in this story. And some of you may have picked up on it already when I used the word the shadow. The climax of the story is when basically the servant um, attempts to uh, kill and the woman that the Count is in love with, and frame him for it. But they're already on to him. Uh, the girl's family's already on to him, uh, on to somebody. And now he's dressed in the Count's clothing. His, his, he wears a mask. Now he's confronted by the Phantom. But uh, before the Phantom can get to the Count, the servant uh, tells him what has happened, that he that the Count, in his sleep, attempted to kill Isabel. And the Count just believes this because, you know, he wakes up in the middle of the night with blood on his clothing. He doesn't know what has happened the night before. And he thinks he's responsible for these crimes that have been occurring. And now he believes he may be do harm to the woman he loves. So he decides to take his own life. The servant then now takes um, the role of the, of the Count. 
He takes his name. There's a little bit of talented Mr. Ripley taking place here. I guess Patricia Highsmith would have been happy with this story. And he takes his role. But he's confronted by the Phantom who says, you failed. We know it was you. And I saved the Count just in time. And the man just tells him, you know, he's just angry about his position. He's just a shadow to this man, to the Count. And he will never be able to rise in his position. He had a confrontation with the, with the Phantom. And the Phantom is able to capture him and turn him into the law, turn him to the law. And the Count is able to marry Israel. And finally, the Count sees an entrance, I'm sorry, the Phantom, where the story ends. To the place across the street, and he goes and finds a piano. And they're in German, I think it's German, it says, Soon, my love. And, but the piano keys are dusty. Nobody's played them. So he never found out who was there. And what happened. But this part here says that Hans Christian Andersen visited Naples shortly thereafter and heard about what, the story about the Count and his servant. And he wrote a story called The Shadow. And if you've read the story, it's basically about a scholar who is obsessed with his own shadow. And so his own shadow finds poetry across the street. Literally, he finds poetry. And for three weeks, his shadow spends time there. And when it emerges, it's now a man. And it takes the place of the Count and marries the princess. And the Count becomes a shadow of the shadow and on the wedding night as the shadow now man is with the princess they look out into the night and the shadow disappears the phantom by the creation of the fog thank you for viewing